已有足够嘅法定人数。I declare that we already have a quorum and we'll get the meeting started. Dear members, it is meeting is held in a distance manner. If you would like to speak, please use the raise hand function on Zoom. When your time is about to be up, our working staff will show on the screen the time that is remaining. When time is up, there will be a beeping sound to remind you. In addition, I remind members that when you are participating, please keep your camera on to show your face. And your mic will be switched on under my instruction. We only have one item for discussion. Proposed legislation to provide temporary protection for specified business tenants. Let's welcome Mr. Paul Chan, Financial Secretary and his team. In order to have the meeting and take a turns in an orderly manner, we will first remove the raise hand button. For those who would like to speak, you can now press the raise hand button and I will ask you to speak one by one. Mr. Paul Chen. Together with Mr. Christopher Ho, Secretary for FST, to participate in this special meeting of CI panel to take you through certain proposed short-term protective measures to specified business tenants and to answer your questions. Facing the fifth wave of the pandemic, the market overall is sluggish. Many commercial activities have been hard hit and we feel rather pessimistic about the economic performance. Many employees have been hard hit as well with this Suffocating environment is very difficult to run the businesses. As I mentioned in the budget, this is a critical moment of fighting the pandemic and we must adopt all necessary measures to protect the essence of our economy, especially the survival of SMEs and to protect people's jobs. SMEs take up about 98% of total number of enterprises in Hong Kong employing the number of people, which is 45% of the private sector, many of which are low skill level positions. To protect them means we can protect the jobs of many grassroots people, save people's livelihood and keep the society stable, which is very important in fighting the pandemic. The budget has adopted a number of measures to protect and support SMEs, to relieve the cost, help with the flow of funds, and also stimulate the market demand. For the first two parts, they have been explained in the paper already as a background. In terms of stimulating the market, a new round of consumption voucher arrangement has been announced. Within April, the phase one voucher will be issued, helping to relieve members of the public and also tenants of shops in terms of the pressure. The pandemic has created a huge blow to the market and our economy. SME's business is nearly frozen. The operation and cash flow is difficult. Many cannot pay for their rent. So in order to allow them a breather in the situation, instead of seeing the collapse of many such enterprises. We are now proposing a number of legislative relief to help people running their businesses. If they are not able to pay for their rent, we'll protect them from uh, having the landlord to take legal action against them or to seek the rental payment immediately. We're providing a buffer to these operators so that even if they are unable to pay the rental for the time being, they won't have to close down because the landlord is taking legal action. And it also facilitates renegotiation of rental level between landlords and the tenants. I want to stress that we are not saying that landlords cannot collect rental that they deserve. And tenants still face the obligation to pay the rent. 
we are simply delaying the timing of legal actions to be taken in Australia and Singapore as examples when the pandemic situation is very difficult and when the economies were seriously impacted upon they also adopt similar measures the legislative proposal will provide assistance to those operations affected by the social distancing arrangements in specified premises this is a temporary rental relief if commercial tenants beginning from the first day of 2022 during the three-month protection period if they fail to pay the rental according to the leases the landlords cannot in this protection period take specified legal actions the protection period will expire in three months upon the enactment any specified actions to be taken by the landlord will be a criminal offense the cap is 50 000 or twice the value of the rental the enforcement party will be the rating and evaluation department we have been collecting views from all sectors and stakeholders and afterwards we have considered that the legislative proposal may create short-term financial pressure to landlords we further propose the following improvement measures to improve the overall operations first we will suspend uh, the suspension of rental payment period is three months we will increase the certainty of this measure by not allowing further postponement and there could be deferral of payment of rates the creditor need to suspend all actions to pursue the repayment of loans from the landlords if anyone is relying solely on the operations as their livelihood support then we can arrange a an interest-bearing loan kept at 100,000 hopefully we will provide room to facilitate renegotiate of rental arrangements between landlords and the tenants in order to respect both parties and the new arrangement reached through such negotiation we recommend that the rental suspension measures will not cover the renegotiated leases during the protection period if in this period renegotiation is reached the temporary relief measures will no, no longer be valid person the arrangements will only last for three months which is a short period but to those who are in extreme difficulties the smes and their staff members this could be something that will help them keep their jobs and keep their operations we therefore hope to legislate as soon as possible so as to launch the measures as soon as possible we're happy to take your views and respond to your questions thank you thank you mr chen now i will invite members to speak in turn after the first round if time permits i will invite the second round i will read out the first four members who have raised their hands on zoom they are mr cheng yu yen mr lo wai kuok mr xu Ken, and madam ken wai man mr tony Zhang, please can you hear me yes thank you chairman Mr. Chen, thank you. I'm grateful for 
the budget. For the affected sectors, we also hope to see, look at ESS and also the two plus two arrangement. Let's not talk about those two, then the overall budget is worth supporting. Concerning this tenancy issue, or the lease matter, it doesn't affect the spirit of the contracts. If you're in the catering business, manpower, and the money you need to pay for your stock and the rental are important expenses. If we can suspend the rental and the necessary litigations, it will create more cash flow, allowing us more energy to tackle the pandemic. If a bailiff can be engaged by your landlord when you stop paying for your rent and the landlord can cut your water and power supply, it is a huge problem. So such suspension measures will definitely stabilize the mindset of people in the restaurant sector. If the landlords are worried about revenue difficulties, it will become easier for them to renegotiate to, with the tenants in relation to a reduction of the rental level so that they can compromise and get through the rough time together. Either way, we support Mr. Chen's measures. This is very important to us. As you can see last time, three landlords, not big ones, there were 75 litigations already. They have issued uh, the lawyer's letters. So we support this. For uh, those shops affected by 599. Well, I think it is not for profit making supermarkets. I don't want to take up too much time. I just hope that the Liberal Party, you and I will of course support this. I also urge other members to support the Financial Secretary's proposed measures. Each member, question plus answer, you'll have four minutes. Mr. Po Chen, thank you Mr. Zhang for your support. I will leave uh, more time to collect things. Mr. Lo Kok then. Thank you, Chairman. I'm not a member of this panel, but this measure is very important. So we're very concerned about this as well. First of all, concerning the rationale behind this proposal, we all understand this is to save the market. But there is one thing in principle that Mr. Chen must consider. Rental leases. Are legal contracts. So by using this special measure to overthrow the spirit of contract law, well, I think That may shake the foundation of rule of law. You have to consider that. But of course, I understand that the pandemic is making life very difficult and we have to take urgent measures. The second point I want to raise is that, according to Mr. Chen, if the landlord and the tenant reach some sort of agreement to restructure the lease, in other words, to reduce the rental level, then that may uh, lead to postponement in legal actions and offer short-term protection to the tenants. These measures will no longer be applicable. I agree with that because this is exactly what the Business and Professionals Alliance has been 
proposing to the secretary. If property owners and tenants have an agreement, there should not be the issue of not allowing them to chase rental payments. So I find what the financial secretary said logical. So I think this can allay landlords and tenants uh, doubts. They may say that, okay, we have already negotiated the agreement and all of a sudden there is this measure. So what we had discussed uh, earlier on would be meaningless, but what the FS said just now could allay our doubt and worry. I have three points of comments. I agree with Mr. Tommy Zhang. He just referred to the employment support scheme. I think for SMEs, the difficulty is not only about rental, but about paying wages. So if the positions are retained, but then salary payment is suspended, then these people will not have any income. Well, ESS is not today's main topic, but still it should be considered. Point four. Now the FS said that rates uh, payment can be deferred. Well, for these three months, can rates be waived? Because in the earlier scheme, it seems that the government had not offered any specific support. The government had uh, hung on to its wallet or pocket. So can these points be considered? I would like to have a more positive response from the FS. Yes, thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Lowe. Two points. First, if the landlord and the tenant can reach an agreement on rental, then this um, clause or this provision will not apply. I think we are talking about an agreement during the protection period. Three months after the commencement of this regulation, if the landlord and tenants can come to agreement on a new arrangement, then this particular provision will not be uh, will not apply. That's the first precondition. Then about rates, as we all know, in Q1 and Q2 for non-domestic uh, properties, for rates, we're going to reduce the amount by $5,000. In Hong Kong, there are 430,000 non-domestic uh, units. So a reduction by $5,000 for the first quarter, then 75% of um, the um, premises will enjoy a, a waiver. So this policy is mainly for SMEs. Just now I gave a figure. You will understand that for rates, I think uh, a deferment is good enough. Can I add a point? Concerning renegotiation of rental. Well, financial secretary, please do not uh, draw too much on when this renegotiation takes place. Let's say if this um, provision is passed. Well, if there was a prior agreement, well, in some cases, landlord has reduced rent for 50%. So please do not say, okay, that 50% reduction doesn't count. I think in that case, that would be too unreasonable. Regarding rates, I think even uh, with the figure you just gave, still there are many people who are not able to benefit a lot from that concession. So since there is this three months um, moratorium, I think you would definitely earn some applause if you are able to uh, introduce concession or waiver on rates. Chairman, uh, can you allow me to uh, spend a little bit more time because I guess members are more concerned about this point. I said that the agreement must be reached within the protection period so that this particular uh, provision will not apply because there is discussion about this provision already in society since the budget till now. And then there is going to be a legislative process. No matter how fast we go, we still need some time. And in the interim period, there would be different types of landlords and tenants. So during this period, I'm talking about a, uh, a gap, a time gap. 
I don't want to see too much unnecessary pressure on the tenants. At the same time, we have to draw a line because the renegotiation can be can take can take place or could have taken place in September, December last year or January this year. So because of the pandemic, I think February and the past months are very different. So between the landlord and tenants, if there is no problem, nothing will stop rental payments. If a tenancy uh, had been agreed on some time ago and both sides were happy, if they are willing to have that continued, then well, they only need to reconfirm the renegotiated agreement within the protection period. That's what we have in mind. Thank you. Thank you, FS. Next, Mr. Yao Tad Khan. Thank you, Chairman. FS, greetings. I do support your budget concerning the moratorium, rental moratorium. I think uh, many members of the trade are in support because many members of the IT sector are in retail. They have uh, opened their stores. I have invested in catering and entertainment business. So since the budget till now, we all understand the situation is now more uh, severe and the economy is even worse. Many companies have closed their stores. So the impact of the fifth wave is really big. Many members of the trade are of the view that the pandemic has taken away many lives. But then in the business sector, I think a lot of lives would also be taken away because many SMEs are thinking of uh, closing down. So I hope that support can be given as soon as possible. Concerning the major or broad principle, I think uh, most members of the trade are in support of the retail association's uh, idea. So for example, can there be turnover rent on the part of the landlord? So rent is charged based on turnover. So if good business is good, then uh, higher rent can be paid. Otherwise, can the rent be at a more reasonable amount? Of course, there are people who rely on rental income for a living. Then in those cases, can banks also help? Can banks reduce um, mortgage interest by 50%, for instance? So if uh, the premises belongs to you, then uh, there is uh, nothing that can be uh, reduced in terms of the principle. However, can banks also offer some concession here? As you said, SMEs account for 98% of the enterprises. And I think banks and uh, property sector account for the remaining 2%. Well, property sector accounts for 19.6% of profit tax, banks 25.3%. So 45% in total by these two sectors based on 2019 to 2020 figures. So can these sectors um, write out the difficulties together with all? So I think rental based on revenue or turnover is reasonable and can the banks think of ways to help the small landlords in terms of mortgage payment. We hope that in terms of rental moratorium, uh, can you go for three months plus three months because if the period only lasts three months, well in many cases tenants have already paid three months of deposit, so can the FS consider? FS please. Thank you Chairman and Mr. Yao for the question. So concerning turnover rent, I think this point should be left to the market to determine because in the market, composition of rent is different. Very often, apart from turnover rent, in many of the cases, there's a basic rent and sometimes it is high, sometimes it is low, it is not standard. So I think this should be left to the market. Now this is a very um, exceptional period and what we are doing is to offer a breathing gap uh, for SMEs and for everyone to find a solution to overcome this very short term and difficult uh, fight as regards the banks. We have discussed with Hong Kong MA and we believe that it is more appropriate to 
um, implement a similar moratorium. Next, Ms. Ken Wyman. Thank you, Chairman. FS. On the day you announced the budget, I said that this rental moratorium arrangement is a breakthrough on the part of the government because this is an exceptional period. So I think this is also an exceptional measure. So I said that at that time that LegCo needs to examine and uh, strike the best balance. In order to reach the best balance, I would like to make two requests. First, when you spoke just now, you said that similar arrangement was uh, implemented in other places. So can you cite a couple of examples? And also the legislative experience and effectiveness for us to consider. Secondly, you said you referred to the spirit of contract and also CAP 105, Article 105 of Basic Law about private property right protection. So we understand that the, it is uh, only about a deferment of payment. The rental amount will not be changed. It's just a deferment of payment. So we'd like to have some legal advice for consideration. So these are my two suggestions. Besides concerning the protection period, we are of the view that the calculation of the protection period is critical. Now, according to the paper, the protection period refers to three months after commencement of the bill. So are we referring to three months after the third reading of the bill, or you are going to name an effective date in the bill and then uh, three months after that date? So I guess, we will have to consider all these. You talked about uh, renegotiation of the rent. I think this is a good idea because uh, for point five that you mentioned just now, it is not in the paper. So it is good that you mention it here. So landlords and tenants will know how you're going to uh, calculate this protection period. Finally, if the tenancy comes to an end within the protection period, then will it be covered? Thank you. Thank you, FS. Chairman, first of all, other countries practice. Well, we can offer some basic information. However, the scope uh, in other countries, for example, Singapore and the UK is much wider. In 2020, when they suffered from the COVID pandemic outbreak, they proposed that and it is wider and the time frame is different. We are talking about a short time frame. Second, spirit of contract and impact on, on the, uh, the basic law. We will definitely provide the information. From day one onwards, we have been working with the D of J colleagues to make sure that legally speaking, uh, what we are proposing is proper. Number three, protection period. We hope that this bill can be passed as soon as possible and it will come into effect right away. Now the situation is already very bad. If the bill, if the law can take effect as soon as possible, then that would be the best. That's what we have in mind. Number four, within the protection period, if there are tenancies coming to an end, now this protection period only covers the original contract term. Afterwards, what will the landlord and the tenant do? I think we are not in a position to interfere with that here. So secretary, that means the protection period is, let's say if the bill comes into effect on the 1st of April, then uh, that would be three months afterward for the protection period from 1st January to 30th June. This period is the moratorium, right? Is that what you mean? Okay, Carmen, let me explain. The protection period is the moratorium period. The relevance rental. Now, let me give an example. In January, the pandemic just started. So perhaps the tenant had, has already paid rent in January. And then in February, rent has not been paid yet. In March, rent was still not paid. And then on 1st April, the bill was passed and there is a protection period for three months. 
Then beginning from 1st of April to end of June for three months, the landlord cannot take any action to go for the rental arrears covering February to June. If for some tenants, let's say June and December rental or November and December rental from the previous year are still outstanding. Then before the pandemic, which is the 1st of January, there was already rental arrear. If the landlord takes any legal action that is outside of the scope. So beginning from January 1st until the end of the protection period, and the protection period will cover three months since the enactment of the legislation. Thank you. Thank you, Carmen. The next four are Min Ka, Tsang Mok Han, Yong Han Biu, and Yong Ho Yan. Mr. Min Ka first. Thank you, Chair. Good afternoon, Mr. Chen. SME tenants will, of course, welcome your three month rental moratorium arrangement. But on two fronts, I want to get more details. First, because you talked about within the three month protection period, if the unit has been rented out to a specified trade and I cannot get my rent for whatever reason, then the bank cannot ask me for repayment. So at the end of the day, it is about the ability to make repayment. If there is no rental income, then of course it may cause real difficulty. But what if I have two shops? Shop A is rented to a, uh, a specified trade without mortgage. And then B rented to non-specified trade with mortgage. When it comes to my ability to continue to pay for the first one, depends on my rental income from both shops, perhaps due to old age or the mortgage is only for five to 10 years, which is very short, involving a huge amount. Then the bank or financial institution when they decide if the person relies on a rental level, will they consider the whole basket of premises before they make a decision to pursue the repayment or not? In the document, it says that any person relies on rental income as the basic livelihood, then 100,000 interest-free loan will be offered by the government. That is a great proposal. But I want to know, in terms of legislative intent, how do you define if someone is relying on this as the livelihood, the foundation of his livelihood? We have Mr. Arthur Yoon from the Hong Kong MA, so I will leave the question about the banks to him. So if someone depends on something as a livelihood. Let's say someone has spent his life saving on purchasing the premises and then uh, he needs the rental income to support his daily living. That is what we are considering. And we will try to be as compassionate as possible in handling these cases. Mr. Yun. Thank you, Mr. Chen. Thank you, Mr. Ng, for your questions. Under the scheme, there are different possible scenarios. I think overall speaking, if the bank's client has two properties and combined together, this client is then able to make the repayment, then yes, he should meet the requirements. And in this situation, the bank will be reasonable in handling the case. So Mr. Ng, there's no need to worry too much. As for individual cases, how they are handled, we will have time to clarify. But overall speaking, 
instruction given to the banks is to hope that during this period, they will try to be as reasonable and accommodating as possible to handle the cases. So this is a scheme that will cover for three months. I don't think there will be any difficulties for banks to deal with these cases. Next. This is Hong, not Hong. So thank you very much. If many operators can't pay for the rent and they have to close the business, I support these measures. And the purpose of this legislation is to protect SMEs. But at the same time, we need to understand the difficulties faced by the landlords. The landlords have stronger capability for repayment. So it's just a postponement of rental income for three months. So I think in this free market, the spirit of contract, Hong Kong for many years adopted this rule of no intervention. When we consider the current situation around the world, everyone is talking about anti-globalization. We can no longer, to have no intervention, this is no longer re reasonable. This is something for the normal times, but today we are looking at this abnormal time. It is like war time. We need to adopt something different. We are not violating the law, we are just legislating new laws to ensure the implementation of policies we need to work on the details of the supporting arrangements and try our best to alleviate the concerns of the landlords. I raised three points previously, allow me to repeat them. First, session period. After this period, there will be a repayment period. How can the tenants to actively repay the money? Secondly, the landlords are the most concerned about the operations being closed in three months. They can't find anyone and they may lose the three month rental. So is it possible that in terms of tax arrangements, we can give special consideration to the landlords. And thirdly, if you look at some experience in places like Singapore after the protection period is possible that there could be major disputes between landlords and tenants. So these disputes caused by the moratorium, can we um, set up some sort of dispute resolution mechanism in advance? Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Tam, for the questions. In terms of supporting measures, after the protection period, how do they pay for the rental um, amount? And what about the business closing down, causing certain risk to the landlords? At the moment, when commercial leases are signed, there is a three month deposit involved and some sort of guarantee. Our measure is rather short. So to the landlords, they already have a certain amount as deposit in hand. The tenants usually spend quite a bit of money on renovation together with a deposit. Every business represents someone's dedication and commitment. They wouldn't want to wrap up their business. What about the three month rental? that has been postponed. I think it's better to leave it to the negotiation of the landlords and the tenants. It's hard for us to set something across our board in terms of the timing. This is a free market and we have already talked about this. On the one hand, this is unusual time. We need unusual measures. And even in the legal world, we also have this concept of force majeure. We're talking about only three months 
And when there are special situations in the market, the government takes certain measures to intervene. We can only do so while we are doing something in line with public interest, as I explained. In Hong Kong at the moment, government's intervention to interfere with the market, including the recent uh, subdivided flood measures, minimum wage, and then further down the road, uh, property market measures. So in special cases, in order to maintain market order and to protect pub public interest, the government can legislate to take measures to intervene. This is not anything exceptional. And as I said, UK, Australia and Singapore, they have all done something like this and also California in the USA because we want to suppress the spread of the pandemic in two months. So we decided to come up with a short-term measure and narrow the scope. We don't want to see that in such a short period of time, we have something that is too broad. Thank you. Next, Madam Yong Ha Yan. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Mr. Chen, for hearing our views and then provided further operational details. The protection period, the rates moratorium, and during the protection period, the seeking of repayment and also this interest-free loan capped at 100,000. We welcome these proposals. Over the weekend, we have heard many views from operators And Mr. Chen also dialed in to talk about the details we've heard from different tenants. They have heard that under the new arrangement, the landlords uh, may offer a 50% waiver or 30% waiver on the rental level. They welcome these arrangements and they hope that the new legislation can be enacted. Other members have asked about protection period in paragraph 15. I can uh, actually in paragraph eight, beginning from the 1st of January and the three month period. If the landlord continues to uh, seek rental payment, there will be problem. But it says that if the landlord takes action within the three month per protection, protection period, there will be a fine. You already announced that January 1st, let's say beginning from February, they already submitted something to the court. Would the landlord be subject to a criminal sanction or penalty or a fine? Or are you just talking about the three month protection period, which may trigger the fine? If I look at the paper, it sounds like we calculate from the 1st of January, plus three months after enactment of the new law. So if I understand correctly from the document, that is what I get. So Mr. Chen, can you further explain this legal matter so that landlords will not fall into this legal trap, so to speak? Thank you, Madam Young, for your questions. Here, I want to explain two concepts, protection period, and relevant rental. The protection period will start from the moment of enactment of the legislation. When I talked to Carmen, we were assuming it will be enacted on the 1st of April, and the period will cover the 1st of April to the end of June. That's protection period. And then relevant rental. Which part of the rental should not be subject to legal action taken by the landlord. The line is drawn at the beginning of this pandemic, 1st of January. Rental area can be subject to legal action before this date, but after, please don't do so. To give you an example, Madam Young talked about uh, the landlord submitting some legal document in February uh, or in March, I've seen some cases. 
once the legislation is enacted on the 1st of April, then all such legal actions must be suspended for three months. These three months, the tenants will get a breathing space and both the landlord and the tenants can see if they can come to a solution. Thank you, Chairman. In other words, let's say on 1st of January till now, if legal action had already been taken to pursue rental payments, then what? Well, we will not cancel that action, but then uh, it is going to be a standstill arrangement. They cannot pursue further. Mr. Longhorn Bill, sorry, just now I overlooked you. Your turn now. Thank you, Chairman. Can you hear me? Yes. Chairman, let me declare. I am the Secretary General of Hong Kong Reader. However, today I am giving my views as a councillor. As regards readers' views, I think the submission has already been sent to this um, subcommittee or panel. Thank you, FS, for um, presenting his new ideas. I would like to say that the FS assumption for the whole scheme is that the landlord will have higher affordability or capability to ride out the difficulty. However, I have received many landlords letters asking the FS to uh, withdraw the whole proposal because in those few months, if they can't receive rent, then their cash flow will be affected. And as a result, they may be forced to lay off their staff and that may affect employment. So it is not always true that the landlords always have higher ability to withstand the downturn. Now, many SMEs face a difficulty and that is the business volume declined significantly as a result. They experienced liquidity problem. So concerning the rental enforcement moratorium, even though it lasts three months, still their problems are not solved. After three months, the rental in the rear will be bigger and bigger. And so at that time, the problem will be bigger. So I agree with the uh, enhanced SMEs financing scheme that can help SMEs cash flow. Besides, I suggest that the FS can consider a new round of ESS so that SMEs can have more breathing space. Just now, some uh, colleagues said that the government is trying to hold on to your purse. But during this exceptional period, can the government consider some allowance, for example, rental allowance? to uh, tenants. At the same time, the landlord can also offer some concessions to tenants. In the past few rounds of the pandemic, both the landlords and tenants have gone through a lot of deliberations and many special arrangements have been offered. So it is not true that all landlords were very rigid. So I would like to make this point. Besides, FS, you talked about the protection period and agreements reached before the protection period. Those will not be covered. In that case, I think that would be a necessary conflict here because since FS uh, proposed the scheme, many landlords and tenants have been deliberating. Some have reached an agreement. Let's say if this law comes into effect on 1st April, then what was discussed earlier on would not apply. Then as a result, that would be a necessary conflict. So that's all from me for the time, time being. Okay, thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Long Han Bill. Chairman, because of time, I will answer two questions first. For the other points about ESS, and whether or not the government will offer subsidy or allowance 
to tenants to pay rent. I will take those points at the end. I would take two questions first. First, the uh, rental renegotiation agreement. So Mr. Long just said that recently, the landlords and tenants had already uh, agreed on some uh, renegotiation of rents. Well, in fact, if both parties had a consensus, there is no problem for us. But if we do not limit it to within the protection period, if there are, well, there may be different circumstances, very odd uh, circumstances before the protection period, that will not be desirable. Secondly, in case if the landlords can't receive rent, will the cash flow be affected? As said just now, um, the uh, Financial Services uh, Bureau through the banks would uh, provide for necessary flexibility and loan repayments can be deferred. Thank you. Okay, there are four other members, Mr. Xun Dong, Mr. Chaman Huang, Mr. Tang Fei, Mr. Wang Chen Shai. Mr. Xun Dong first. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, based on what I know, many SMEs experienced a lot of difficulty, for example, in the catering business, retail and tourism industry. For a long period of time, they received zero income. So these measures are to maintain the overall economic development in Hong Kong. So I do support uh, the proposal for the long term uh, sake of Hong Kong. And then I know that there are a lot of repercussions in society. I've had different views from uh, SME landlords and also tenants. So I do um, commend the FS for um, five supplementary points made. So he has um, taken the best effort to balance every party's interests, especially for SMEs and tenants. Some very concrete measures are proposed. I welcome these new recommendations and I commend the FS for his goodwill. I think my questions have been answered by his five uh, supplementary proposals. So now I would like to raise two hopes of mine. First, I hope that the tenant and the landlords and the relevant government departments can work closely together. They should try their best to ensure that this law can be enforced successfully because this is the first time in Hong Kong's history. Well, the government's goal is to uh, support the economy and employment. And so I think uh, we should uh, work together to ride out the difficulty. We should try our best to make sure that even after the measure is put in place, while well, many businesses still close down as a result, there would be big loss for all parties. This is something that society doesn't want to see. Besides, I hope that the landlord and tenants can take this opportunity to reach a new uh, rent reduction agreement so I think the landlord and tenants should deliberate further to uh, the tenants should try their best to get a maximum rental concession with the condition that they will pay rent promptly. I think, uh, of course, this is an exceptional period. So we are talking about exceptional measures. We face a severe pandemic. Everybody needs to uh, work together. And then I'm sure we would be able to ride out the difficulties. FS, thank you, Mr. Sun for your valuable comments. Last week, uh, we consulted LegCo members in a number of sessions on this legislative proposal. We'd like to get your support. And also we'd like to get your valuable comments. Today, we um, proposed five amendments. That is because in the past period, we have heard uh, different com comments and suggestions from different sectors. So my undertaking is what we are able to do, we will try our best to do it. We hope that during this very difficult time, for the sake of Hong Kong and SMEs, and also the grassroots employees, we'd like to 
find a way for them to survive and for them to continue to make a living. So definitely we will try our best. So thank you, Mr. Sun, for your two hopes and reminders. Thank you. Next, Mr. Chairman Kwong. Thank you, Chairman. FS, greetings. So on rental enforcement moratorium, we can see that in the market, there is wide extent of business closure. So now we are talking about uh, safeguarding employment, safeguarding the market. I think this is a very brave move, which is worth support. Well, concerning SME tenants and landlords, well, both sides have their points. You have already put in a number of uh, measures, um, and at least you have proposed five amendments after considering people's uh, comments. This is not easy. Of course, we hope that the pandemic will be over in the coming three months, but the impact will not be limited to the next three months. Now, concerning the protection period, it is going to be three months after the commencement of this bill. It won't be extended. However, every day we see a few 10,000 confirmed cases. And at that time, if you uh, come again and ask for a new legislative procedure, will that be a waste of time? I know that the government has really goodwill. You try to um, defer payments of rates and you ask the creditor not to pursue the loan repayments. I think the government has done its very best. I'm not trying to speak for the government, but nobody wants to see this big plight. In the latest, uh, suggestion of the government, point number four. So, standalone store held by an individual for rental payments to make a living. Well, there is a an upper limit of 100,000 as guarantee. So, how can you define making a living from the rental income? Well, the property may be held jointly by a couple then what should be done? And how can we guard against people um, making use of the legal loophole? FS, please. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman Huang, for your support. Concerning uh, making a living from the rental property, in the past period, we have taken into consideration uh, the councils and public uh, thoughts. We will try our best to be lenient in enforcement. This is only a short-term measure. We are only talking about uh, three months rent. Uh, we waive interest payment, but still the uh, rent has to be repaid. Otherwise, that would be uh, impact on uh, those people's credit information. And we are talking about landlords. So I think um, refusing to repay uh, has a very small probability. So I think we should be um, more considerate and lenient. Next, Mr. Tang Fei. Okay. Thank you, Chairman. FS, greetings, Mr. Tang. During this difficult time, during this difficult time in the budget, this is a very creative and bold attempt, and I want to commend you, and I give you my support. But concerning implementation details, starting from day one, so you have been working with D of, D of J about basic law 105, and also conflict, potential conflict with private property rights. Even if LegCo passes this bill, if there are landlords, especially the big landlords, well, if they start a judicial review, well, that may be possible. However, if judicial review really happens, then I think the whole moratorium will come to a halt. So this is something that I am worried about. Just now, some members asked a question. That is, three months later, will the tenants have to repay the rent at one go? 
or they can um, spread out the rental payments that will be up to the landlord and tenant to discuss. But then if there is no guideline or legally binding direction from the government, then let's say if this law is passed on 1st April, then on 1st of July, on our 25th anniversary, all of a sudden, landlords will pursue tenants for the three months uh, rent. Then as a result, the uh, sentiment in society will be quite bad. Should there be some guidelines for landlord and tenants to discuss? Finally, can you set up some rent-free period for three months? All these listed premises have no operations. For example, uh, the interest classes and tuition centers, everything has stopped. So in three months, there is still no activity. They still can't pay. So can you consider that as some sort of assistance? Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Mr. Deng Fei. Would that be JR? What would be the situation when we drafted this with our DFJ colleagues? We have given full consideration to that and we have a, uh, some sort of preparation, even with JR challenge. That would not lead to the suspension of this legislation. Even JR needs time to go through certain procedures. In different scenarios, there are different ways to respond. I remember some years ago when I was the uh, Secretary for Development, I was promoting land supply, including green zones to be rezoned as residential uses, so as to supply land in the private sector. There are also green belt zones converted into public housing supply land. At the same time, we faced various JR challenges. I can tell you. We spared no effort despite all the pressure, and land supply was greatly enhanced. Even when we faced JR, the supply reached the market. Even when someone proposed getting an injunction, we won the legal case. So we have sufficient assessment and we are very confident. What will happen to the rental arrangement in three months? It's hard to have across the board arrangements because each landlord and tenant will have their own negotiations and there's a lot of flexibility. Anything rigid is not suitable here. I mentioned, uh, you mentioned additional assistance to tenants. We can't legislate to waive the rental. But you should remember, under SME finance scheme, there is 100% guarantee. We strengthen that guarantee scheme. Originally, SMEs under the scheme can borrow uh, 18 months of rental and salary kept at 6 million. We are increasing 18 months to 27. The cap has been increased to 9 million and the duration for repayment of interest only has been extended to 10 years. In other words, members, to help SMEs, if they feel that they can hang in there, on the one hand, we will reduce the cost for them, and second, in terms of cash flow, that will be dealt with by the rental moratorium, the guarantee scheme, and then the consumption voucher creating hope. If they decide there is prospect and they hang in there for the next few months, we have all the support measures to help them hang in there. Next, Mr. Wong Jun said. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Chen, for your time. I think. The FS idea is good. Normally speaking, the landlord has greater capability of fighting a pandemic and the 17 specified premises belong to hard hit industries and trades. So for the local SMEs and also the business sector, this is a very good first step. 
I also understand that it is very difficult for some people. Some landlords have reached some sort of agreement or rental reduction with the tenants in the community other than the no claim period. What about other data under the pandemic? How government measures? can lead to less rental income for the landlords and also during the three month period according to overseas experience how many people will simply default and not pay the rent at the end requiring the government to shoulder the burden can we get some more data thank you mr chen Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Mr. Wong. It's not easy to provide some data. For example, landlords and tenants reaching certain agreements, how they make the necessary transactional arrangements, because for both parties, this is commercial secret. In many scenarios, after rental reductions offered, the landlords don't want to tell people about it because they don't want to affect the other leases. So it's difficult to provide some of the data. Secondly, in our assessment, as mentioned earlier, the protection period is only three months, it's rather short. The landlords very often already hold in possession several months of deposit and the tenants would need to find someone to provide guarantee to the landlords. So to the landlords, there is some sort of protection offered. Let's take one step back. If the SMEs are failing and they have to wound up their business, the landlord has to take the premises back and they may very well end up with a vacant place with no new tenant. So we're trying to find possible ways forward, something that is acceptable to the landlords something that is possible for the tenants to shoulder and then the employees of the tenants and also stability of the overall society will benefit. Five left for the first round. If you would like to speak next, you can raise your hand. I will read the names. They were one, Lin Zi Wing, Mr. Chen Zhao Hong, Ms. Wang Yun San, and Ms. Wang Ying Hong. Mr. Lee first. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, FS, for timely measures in the budget to have rental moratorium. I think. This is a very good balance between the landlords and the tenants and in terms of its timing, three month arrangement can offer a lot of assistance to SMEs. I have some views here. From the landlord's perspective, we don't want to set any poor precedents because Hong Kong is a society with rough law. So in terms of the spirit of contract, we will, don't want to adopt special legislations all the time. But of course, the pandemic is creating a dire situation and we need to adopt necessary measures. For SMEs, we can help with the cash flow. And there is one thing in relation to continuity. And that's the concern of landlords and tenants. The landlords and tenants would like to uh, restart the economy so that they can run their businesses again. I think that will cover the service sector, financial services sector, because of closure issues, we have lost many talents. So the entire economy need the flow of talents and stimulate the retail sector and catering businesses. 
the commercial sector wants to better communicate with the clients. So when the city is still closed off, all these things may be affected. Yes, for the shorter term, we can do things online, but for the longer term, if we can't control the pandemic, we can't meet with the clients, we can't eat together, we can't shop, we can't go out, and we work from home all the time, it's hard to survive in three months. Many enterprises are just hanging in there, hanging by a threat. Yes, we are talking about rental issues, but more importantly, it is about stimulating the economy so that as soon as possible, we can restart everything. That's what I want to point out. Thank you. Mr. Chen. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Robert, for your questions. And you said it very correctly. The most fundamental thing is about getting through the three months so that the entire economy in Hong Kong can be uh, brought back to recovery. Our ultimate mission here is to suppress the pandemic and have active zero of infections. We have a lot of support from our motherland. We have concerted efforts in the two months ahead of us. We must stop the spread of the disease. We are very confident. So when we can suppress the disease and achieve zero infection, then we can talk about opening up the border again. Without this new wave, we would have already opened the border. And we can reinvigorate our economy. At the moment, the vaccine take-up rate is almost 90 percent and will continue on with such efforts. Around the world, we are looking at some new medicine, which have very good outcome in treating COVID-19. So in other words, the next step is to, in an orderly manner, reopen ourselves up to the rest of the world. So I believe this is going to be the most effective way when we can travel again, triggered by the consumption voucher, with concerted efforts, we will enjoy economic recovery. Human GDP is not very positive, but two to 3.5% economic growth is still achievable. Thank you, Mr. Lin Ziwing. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Mr. Chen, for listening to our views. We have been in COVID for two years. We're still very competitive and we are still a free city. Unless it's absolutely necessary, I don't think the government will adopt measures or legislate to deal with the matter. I think this piece of legislation is very pressing to help SMEs. I hope the government can do a bit more to urge landlords to renegotiate a rental arrangement with their tenants because the pandemic's been going on for two years. Landlords are still receiving rental income, but for SMEs running their businesses, they face the greatest pressure mainly because of rental pressure. So I urge the government to do a bit more. In terms of this legislation, I have a few questions. First, when you announced last time, you talked about three months or possible extension of six months, but this time you have set it at only three months. There is no sunset clause. If in the future, the situation continue to be dire. Are you going to legislate again to extend it by another three months? I want to uh, hear some reply from the government. Premises listed in the appendix will benefit from this legislation for some trades or industries. They are not on that list. Would they also be protected? For example, 
school bus services operators they may need to rent parking slots they have to pay but they are not getting any income can they be protected as well thirdly we talked about the agreements to be reached between tenants and landlords to achieve rental reduction and then they can be exempted from the moratorium how much rent reduction are we talking about how much of rent reduction can be waived if the rent reduction is too small then it may not be helpful to the tenants so will the government uh, give a range for example this may be excessive intervention however if there isn't a uh, range that is an extent of rent reduction then it may not be able to help tenants to um, face up to the pressure on rent payments. The government offers a 100% uh, guarantee to help the small tenants or landlords. So in case if the tenants can pay rent, then only then will landlords need to repay um, their loans. Is that possible? Thank you. FS, please. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Leung. For this particular bill, at the end of the day, our decision is not three plus three. That is because we have listened to different comments during this period. And we want people to know that this is an exceptional measure for an exceptional moment um, by the government. And we would like to give you a peace of mind. We want to show that we are really determined to um, keep the pandemic under control. So at the end of the day, our decision is three months. Mr. Leung referred to some sectors or industries. For government car parks, rent has been reduced significantly already. For other related industries, in the anti-epidemic fund, there is some kind of support already. So we indeed have to draw a circle, an appropriate one, to cover the most affected ones. For landlords, small landlords who can't receive rent, we're going to offer them a three-month amount. Well, because we are talking about a three-month moratorium, so that's why the interest-free period is also three months. That's our logic. Thank you. Mr. Chan, Mr. Chan Chou Hang, Thank you, Chairman FS. Greetings. Thank you, FS. And the administration for being so brave and creative in fighting the pandemic. I understand that things can't be perfect. And we are talking about a short period of time and you need to coordinate and liaise with different stakeholders. Overall speaking, we are in support for scheduled premises Based on my understanding, of course, I can't verify all the figures, but concerning scheduled premises, I think uh, we are talking about 100% of those under 5.0. For 5.0, it addressed the economic recession and financial loss during January. For 6.0, I think that will be about uh, February and March, and then in April and May, they will continue to suffer. They will continue to make a loss. And FS, I know that you have other support methods uh, covering non-specified premises or non-scheduled premises. So back to your proposal. If we want the tenants to be able to continue. So rent payment is only deferred for three months. At the end of the day, they still have to pay. And right in front of them, they, uh, they have a risk to take care of. How can we encourage them to uh, briefly continue their operation? This is the most difficult point. If they are willing to make one step further than uh, for the government, And also for the uh, property developers, well, can they help to offer some incentives and support? 
The FS just said that regarding car parks or some of the buildings, rent has already been reduced. I hope that the government can take the lead. Some members asked for guidelines for property uh, companies on how much rent reduction should be offered, but at least there can be some sort of reference or a target. We are not only talking about uh, whether the amount is small or big, but at least we want people to be able to ride out the difficulties together, and that will be more efficient. I understand that the whole process is um, within a very short period of time, and uh, we hope the government can be more flexible. We will try our best to offer you our support. Thank you, Chairman and Mr. Chan Chou Hang. Just now, Mr. Long Chi Wing said that we should um, convince uh, landlords to reduce rent as much as we can. Well, in the past one or two weeks after the budget, we saw two different uh, circumstances. In one case, a few dozen um, summons were issued uh, to pursue payment, rent payment. And then some property companies or landlords said that the shopping malls are being affected by the pandemic and so they stopped operation and they uh, waived rent till 20th of April. Well, this is a very um, conscientious uh, measure. There was not only one property company offering that. Some days ago, a few days ago, another company made the same offer. So some landlords are very considerate, but then some had maintained a very um, strong and hard stance. It is difficult for us to give a guide guideline on how much should be rent reduction. That will not be scientific because we have been under the pandemic for two years or so. In some industries, the landlords have reduced rents to a certain extent, but this wave is really severe. So I think we need to work together to do something more. There are tendencies renewed last year under the pandemic, and in some cases, uh, rent was increased. So I think uh, there are all these different cases, and the SARG cannot really draw a meaningful line to issue a guideline. So we'd like to offer some room for the landlords and tenants to sit down and discuss on the way forward. We hope that the landlords will find it acceptable and the tenants will find it affordable. Then if this is okay, then the moratorium will not apply on the renegotiated tenancy. That's the overall situation. The pandemic is still very, very severe. The situation is still bad and difficult. Concerning impo impact on various sectors and industries, of course, I continue to be very concerned. You talked about how to help SMEs as much as we can, and also enterprises and members of the public who are in difficulty. We will try to do whatever we can. Thank you, Chairman. Next, Mr. Wang Yunshan. Thank you, Chairman. FS, greetings. Thank you very much for your five new um, recommendations. Well, they serve to better uh, balance different parties' views and concerns. Some members referred to the urgency of a new round of ESS concerning this rental enforcement moratorium. Well, if we take reference from other places like the UK and other countries, their exit plan is such that those uh, rent in the rear would become debt. And at the end of the day, those debts are not really repaid. So I would like to look at the worst case scenario. If at that time, the rent in the rear was not repaid, then will that mean 
that our banks and the finance sector will face bigger risk because there is at that time greater default risk. So that is additional risk. For the banks and the finance sector, how much will be the additional or extra risk? That's my first point. Secondly, at the end of the day, if people are not able to repay, then can there be some coordination mechanism? For example, in Singapore, there is an access panel. If that is not done in Hong Kong, then are there other measures? For example, degree of rent reduction. That means that's restructuring. So financial secretary, what do you think? Some retail associations said that rent can be packed to retail value. Is that a good indicator so that the uh, rent in the real or the default and conflicts among landlords and tenants can be reduced? Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Wong. Regarding impact on the financial system, we believe that it is minimal. Even without the moratorium, we already have an interest-only repayment scheme, and most landlords can be covered by that scheme. And we are talking about three months. Apart from rent, the landlords at least hold two to three months of deposit. And there is also the tenant's guarantee. So at the end of the day, if there is a loss that affects the banking system, I think the probability is very minimal. Later on, I will defer to Mr. Yu to elaborate. We do not have an, uh, an assessment panel like that in Singapore. Well, because we only propose three months, a very short term. Together with the reasons I explained just now, I don't think we need to um, introduce further measures. If the person needs to produce a proof to show that he has difficulty and so uh, the law should not apply on him, well, three months will pass very quickly. And uh, in that case, we will face a lot of difficulty. As regards turnover rent, how to structure the rental in the market? Different people have different ways. Apart from turnover rent, there is base rent. In some cases, the base rent is set at a high level, in some cases, much lower. If the base rent is set high, even if the turnover rent is reduced, it is not that meaningful. So I think we should leave that to the market. I know that time is up, but then I still want to defer to Mr. Yun Kwok Hang to elaborate on the impact on banks. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Wang, for the question. As the FS said, the duration of this scheme is only three months. And concerning these loans, well, banks hold collaterals. So even if there is additional risk to banks, it is not big. In the past two years, the pandemic has already been here for two years. Banks have been giving strong support to SMEs, for example, interest-only repayment and other support plans from other banks. FS talked about this three-month special arrangement, and under such arrangement, landlords that will be affected are, most of them are covered by our interest our only repayment scheme. So the additional risk to the banking system is very minimal. Okay, thank you. Next, Mr. Wang Yingho. Thank you, Chairman. Last week, on behalf of DAB, I communicated with the financial secretary and the government has taken on board our views as a result, these five points of amendment are introduced. We believe that now this policy is more balanced. So I would I suggest to our party to give our full support. In 2021, when the pandemic was a lot calmer, 
if you refer to the scheduled premises, last year, the business results rebounded significantly from the trough. So you can see that Hong Kong economy is very resilient. And in the budget, uh, there is consumption voucher measure and other measures. So this time, if you look at this particular measure from the government, I think those companies and parties which are greatly affected by uh, anti-epidemic measures and the CAP 599 uh, laws can enjoy a breathing space, especially those scheduled premises. So I think we can see very clearly um, that the government has been very bold and brave. Well, if you refer to the 100% guarantee loan, the FS already said that it is going to be 18 months salary plus rent, and now it can be it can go up to 27 months, and then for interest-only repayment, 18 months. The government's interest cost is very low because the government is a very uh, good quality guarantor. So, is it possible that some users or some premises in a certain year can uh, be exempted from paying interest? So for those 18 months, can that go up to 24 months for interest-only payments so that after the pandemic, if the, if the economy rebounds, then these users can have more time to uh, make up for their loss. Mr. Chen, thank you. And thank you, Mr. Wong, for your support and questions. How do we further optimize the 100% SME guarantee loan scheme for the operators of these affected premises so that they can be more capable in fighting the pandemic. Mr. Wong's proposal, uh, I will look into them. Before Mr. Wong proposed those ideas under the guarantee scheme, the timing for repayment for the interest only has already been extended. Mr. Wong is saying that other than extension, can we waive the repayment on also the interest so as to alleviate further pressure? Can we further extend the period? I will look into that again. Because if they don't pay for the interest yet, they're still defaulting or owing. So the interest may accumulate to a higher level. And further extension, we will look into the possibility for that. Thank you. All right. For the first round, we have completed all the questions. Anyone who would like to speak for the second round? Perhaps since the first round has completed, I will have my turn. Concerning this proposal, some people feel that the Liberal Party will always be the first to say this is a free economy and we need to work hard and we should not allow handing out of cash. But in the past two years, many people become quite curious. How come handing out options have become so welcomed by us? For example, support to various sectors and industries, cash, uh, handouts or subsidies or vouchers. The reason is we feel that this is not a normal situation under normal circumstances. When you run a business, there's always risk and you need to show the own risk. If you do well, you will make money, otherwise you will lose. It's very simple. That is under normal circumstances. In the past two, three years, as we all know, we've gone through a lot, the riots and then the pandemic. Many people are still hard working, but they can't run the business because there are no more tourists, no business operations. And some have been told by the government to stop operation. So coming back to the proposal, I've heard from community members say that free economy should mean no intervention, spirit of the contracts, so on and so forth. Yes, we do understand. 
But when the uh, economy is normal, why would shops be closed by the government? They do want to run their operations, but they can't even open the doors. It, and then the landlord expect full payment for the rental and they have to pay for the salary of the staff. And we're talking about two years on and off already, not for a short period of time. So if we continue on, there is only one path, which is bankruptcy. They have no other option. So this time around, during this unusual time, the government has come up with this unusual package. I support it. I agree with it. At the same time, we have to pay attention. Small landlords, those who are still paying off the mortgage, they face a lot of pressure too, because the value of many shops have dropped. So for those who have purchased rather recently those premises, they're going through a rough time. If they can't receive rental income, we have to ensure that the, gov the banks won't go after them. So Mr. Yun from the Hong Kong MA is here with us today. So for the smaller landlords, there is this um, 100,000 loan scheme to offer assistance to them. I agree with both of these measures. Let's see if this can be endorsed at the end so that at this unusual time, we can help SMEs to save their operations and save their staff, control well the pandemic, and with the launch of the vouchers, the local economy can pick up again. Thank you for your support. Do we have any questions for the second round? If not, Mr. Chen, would you like to draw a summary? Thank you, Chairman and members. My wholehearted thanks. It was supposed to be a short moratorium for LegCo. Thank you for meeting with us in such short notice. And many of you, I understand that have been disturbed by me last week. You all have also taken your time to attend today. Concerning this measure, some members and members of public have asked, why not consult early? There are two reasons. First, the pandemic hit us with rapid changes. When I prepared the budget, beginning from the end of November last year, all the way to mid-January this year, I thought something was wrong. After the Chinese New Year, we all know what happened. So we made poor assumptions to preparation work again. We came up therefore with this special arrangement. Uh, but we're talking about rather sensitive information and it is not suitable to announce them or disclose them in advance. So please do understand that is why we could not inform you earlier. Secondly, in this process, we are very grateful because we understand you are from different walks of life and involved in different areas of work. You have allowed us to look at this issue from different angles in the process of making exchanges with you. In fact, we collected your views to make the five uh, adjustments. Previously, members talked about legal perspective. I've also told my colleagues that after the meeting, if you are particularly concerned about this, we will maintain close liaison with you and provide further information for your reference. The objective is to have certain efforts so that after we improve the election system under this new political culture, we are humble to receive your guidance and supervision. At the same time, we also hope to brainstorm so that we can help 
Yes, they are government to do well, but we do. Other than concepts, when it comes to implementation and other details, we want to do better on the details so that we can walk the final mile in a good way. So when things are implemented, the public, the users, the stakeholders, We'll all be satisfied. Earlier, when I responded to your questions, there are two points of standing. Previously, when we met online, I have mentioned we talked about the employment scheme, whether the government will provide incentives or subsidies to help tenants to pay the rent. Well, here I think that is rather difficult. If you have already heard this before, please bear with me. I will try to be brief in explaining our thinking to you. First of all, for us to provide subsidies or pay the rental on their behalf is difficult to implement. To reasons, first, we need to consider the financial capability of the SAR government. By the end of March, our reserve is about 940 billion. It's a similar figure compared to when I took on my position, but we did issue debt. Uh, 30 billion on every year. And for the past three years, 2021, 2022, the year, deficit 100 billion. And 18 billion, billion surplus, but the 18 billion surplus, but we have higher stamp duty and tax income. For 18 billion surplus, if you need to deduct the 30 billion of debt issued, and also in the last term of the administration, some money has been placed with the Hong Kong MAS housing reserve that has not been booked. If we bring that back into our books, and what about the last time of government? There's a fund placed with the Hong Kong MA for 10 years. Investment income or benefits not booked. And now we are bringing that back. 25 billion. So if you calculate everything, we don't have 18 billion surplus. We have 60 billion odd deficit. That is 2% of our GDP. In such dire consequences, a dire situation to have an expensive budget is okay. 2% GDP is yes, deficit level. Around the world, that's fine. Two years ago, 200 billion deficit. Deducting our debt insurance, GDP 9%, which is very high. Very high. That was because of the pandemic. What about the next few years? Of course, we are beginning to strike a balance. With one important assumption that economic, economic growth at 3% and also external, internal environment continue to pick up and recover. These are our wishes and also directions for our hard work, our determination. But at the same time, we are looking at changes in the external world. For example, the US suppressing our motherland towards our officials and mainland companies, they are facing sanctions. So this situation will continue for some time. At the moment, they are fighting Russia. So we have a breather for the time being, but we do not know when things will get bad again. So we need to reserve some effort and resources. Just in case if our currency is being targeted, then that may affect our financial and social stability. In terms of the use of our reserve, I am very prudent. Secondly, for the past two years, the pandemic has greatly affected grassroots people with medium to low income levels. 20,000 tax rebate two years ago, 10,000 rebate last year. You may feel that tax rebate 
that's been reduced from twenty thousand to ten thousand. So more people are paying taxes. In fact, no, we are receiving tax payment from tens of thousand less for four hundred to three hundred thousand and three hundred to four hundred thousand. If you calculate all these people, they're paying less. Why? Because they have been affected by the pandemic. They have less income, or they have fallen outside of the taxation net. But if you look at the additional nine billion income for higher end income bracket, the number of people is not increasing that much. But we are receiving more. During the pandemic, the most hardly hit is the grassroots. They are in serious plight. So this time. We offer a $10,000 consumption voucher. We are very determined. That's because we would like the grassroots to directly benefit during this period. If we subsidize the enterprises to pay rent, I think this is difficult to be acceptable in society. We want to use the money directly on members of the public. That is more easily acceptable. If we subsidize the SMEs to pay rent, then people will perceive this as using our public resources to um, protect the landlords in terms of their income. Then people will ask, why don't you help me pay rent? I also find it very difficult to pay rent. So during these circumstances, we do have to leverage on the resources and strength of the whole Hong Kong society and the whole market. If I leverage on the market strength, I can make use of the SME guarantee scheme, then the coverage, the scope will be wider, and more people can be helped. And for the SARG, the burden is less heavy. We should leverage on everybody's ability. We are under the same roof, and we hope everybody can work together hand in hand. We should support each other and walk the path together. Even though this is a commercial society, Hong Kong people have gone through so many different storms. Just now, some members said that we are very resilient. And this resilience is particularly apparent during difficult times when the whole society is united. So, if we use the government's resources directly to subsidize enterprises to pay rent, I find it more difficult. That is my thought. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, FX. If there is no further questions from members, then we can conclude our discussion on this item. Now, this is a legislative proposal, so let me summarize our views. Today, 18 members, including myself, have expressed our views, and the majority of members, in principle, support this legislative proposal. Item 2 of the agenda, AOB. Do members have any other business? If not, then I declare that this meeting is adjourned here. Thank you, FS. Thank you, members.